I'm here with Mr. Ford, who's a consultant trauma and orthopaedic surgeon, and we're going to talk briefly about hip fractures. So first of all, why is it an important topic to cover? Uh, so these fractures are incredibly common um, and uh, hugely expensive, actually, for the health service in general, and also uh, have a surprisingly bad outcome. So, for example, the mortality of uh, patients being admitted with a hip fracture is as high as 10% within the first 30 days, rising to 20% by uh, three months and 30% by a year. So someone coming into hospital sustaining one of these fractures has a one in three chance uh, of being dead within a year. And if you compare that to uh, having a myocardial infarction, where the mortality is around 5% following that, so these are really quite significant problems uh, as much as injuries. And what type of age group do we see this pattern of injury in? So they happen throughout the entire age group, in fact. Um, you know, from people as young as uh, 10 right up to the hundreds. Um, the majority that people think of when they think of a hip fracture are the little old ladies, uh, you know, in their 70s and 80s, as it's essentially an osteoporotic problem. Um, but the other group is the young, active uh, men, often crashing their motorcycles, um, who can sustain similar injuries and these can be really quite devastating for them. Okay, and when we get that x-ray and we're looking at um, a fracture of, say, the neck of femur, what, what types of classification or what types are there? Uh, so the essential uh, initial distinction is between intracapsular fractures and extracapsular fractures. So the capsule inserts along the intratrochanteric line uh, at the base of the neck of the femur, and the important part of that is that's where the blood supply to the head of the femur uh, is carried and so if the fracture occurs within the capsule uh, the blood supply to that head is no longer getting to it uh, because it's been disrupted and then it risks a vascular necrosis um, and that worry defines some of the treatment that follows. Uh, in fact the rate of AVN is quite low, it's only a third um, which is surprising to some people uh, but is felt to be significant enough that it dictates some of the treatment that comes. The extracapsular fractures happen more distal than that, don't have a problem with AVN, and require a different kind of fixation. But that's your first important distinction. Okay, and say so we've um, distinguished between our two types of fracture, and we have someone with an intracapsular fracture, what kind of uh, treatment options are available to those patients? So the next question one needs to ask is whether it's displaced or undisplaced. Uh, so if it's an undisplaced fracture, the blood supply is unlikely to be disrupted and will often uh, do well with fixation. Um, if it's displaced, then we are concerned about blood supply. And so the next important distinction is now based on the age of the patient. So if they're young, one would clearly wish to try and save their head uh, because any kind of replacement will be likely to wear out. Uh, if they're older, then some form of replacement is favoured to avoid the risk of the fracture not uniting or them getting ABN and requiring further surgery. Um, so the key line of thought there is it's an intracapsular fracture, it's undisplaced, we can therefore fix it. If it's displaced and the patient is young, we can still fix it. If they're old, we then favour a replacement. Okay. We talk about young or old. Yeah. The ages of that, obviously, uh, the numbers attached to that offer differ. Young would be considered under 55, old would be over, over 65, so that sort of period in between is quite a difficult one, uh, and often people resort to total hip replacement for those patients in the way that the older ones would be given some form of hemiarthroplasty, so only the femoral side replaced. Okay, and then moving on to the extracapsular fractures, so what types of management do we have there? Yeah, so these now really are treated regardless of the age of the patient and the amount of displacement. The surgery is, is essentially the same uh, for that kind of fracture and by and large is treated with a dynamic hip screw, the DHS, which many people have heard of, and sometimes with a intramedullary nail, uh, which also goes up into the head. One of those forms of treatment, uh, depending really on the fracture pattern, but essentially most of these fractures will be treated with a DHS regardless of age or displacement. Okay, and uh, say my granny comes in and has an intracapsular neck of fracture and has a hemiarthroplasty, what kind of uh, length of stay am I looking at in hospital? So most of these patients are inpatients for around 10 to 14 days. Um, 
we've touched on the mortality which is significant also comes with it morbidity uh, so often if these patients were fully mobile prior to these kind of injuries then uh, they tend to move down a grade of mobility so if they were normally mobile they often need a stick if they had a stick before the injury they often need a frame if they had a frame before the injury they often struggle to mobilize at all but certainly you can expect to be an inpatient for around two weeks okay and there's this thing i've heard of called best practice tariff can you tell me what that encompasses so this is really is trying to focus on developing good care and and an incentive really for providing good care for this significant group of patients uh, this was the first uh, of its kind and is also being used in major trauma now to drive better care and certainly in the first two years of its introduction there's been a significant reduction in mortality across the country and it focuses on a timely visit to theatre so ideally within 36 hours which is enough time to uh, optimize the patient but not enough time for them to start developing complications such as chest infections and uh, clots um, so theatre within 36 hours uh, and also an assessment by an ortho geriatric uh, consultant so focusing on their medical problems as this is uh, one of them and they usually have many comorbidities also looking at a falls assessment as we know that these kind of patients have fallen to get their fracture and tend to be at risk of further falls and further fractures uh, as well as an assessment of their osteoporosis status and treatment for that uh, if required. So really it's a multidisciplinary uh, incentive to give these patients good care, recognising they've many problems, including their fracture. Okay, so it's a pretty uh, important topic there. Hopefully we've covered everything. Thank you very much for talking to us.